You're watching Al Jazeera. We're taking you to uh, Qatar's Hamad Airport, airport, where a Qatar Airways plane has just landed at the airport after departing Kabul with around 158 passengers. It's the second flight from Kabul to Doha. U.S., German, Canadian, French, Dutch, British, Belgian and Mauritanian citizens are said to have been on board. Currently speaking is Dr. Mutlak bin Rashid Al Khatani. He's Qatar's special envoy for the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Counterterrorism and Mediation in Conflict Resolution. Uh, he's been on the flight with those uh, citizens. Qatari and Turkish teams uh, have been working at Kabul's airport to resume their civilian flights. Let's listen into what he's saying. Fully scheduled. With respect to the air navigation, Technically speaking, the airport is operational. However, there are certain considerations that must be taken, and at the same time, each and every airliner should do their own calculations. Simply, there are certain technical considerations in addition to other commercial uh, matters to be taken into account. At the same time, the undertake, uh, the caretaker government of Afghanistan is doing all what they can to streamline uh, the operation of the airport. And as you can see, Qatar Airways is uh, landing and taking off from the airport. We have done our best to have these flights taken off and landing at Kabul airport. The Kabul airport is, uh, is, is a quite uh, operational, and this is not what's the most important now. We found uh, uh, the, uh, the caretaker government is quite cooperative in facilitating, actually, the, the travel of the, of the passengers with no barriers, with no restrictions, and also uh, their collaboration with us to uh, reopen the airport. Uh, a few works to, to be done and mostly administrative. And I think as far as the, the, the as far as the airport is concerned, as I said, it's operational. It's up to the international airlines to uh, to uh, to uh, to fly to Kabul or not. And also there are, are more administrative works that the caretaker government should take uh, uh, in order to make it uh, more more uh, more uh, 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 operational. We have been working uh, with our partners, uh, especially Turkey, uh, to make it, uh, to expedite the process of making it even uh, uh, more efficient. And this is, has something to do with, you know, with further talks with the caretaker government to see what's the best way to make this airport uh, more efficient. Dr. Qahtani, do you expect that there's going to be flights daily now from Kabul to, to Qatar? And also, there was a little bit of confusion yesterday about whether these were charter flights or commercial flights or passenger flights. Could you just elaborate on that a bit as far as what exactly the status is of these planes that are coming in? Well, I think the most important, this is not uh, evacuated uh, mission. This is uh, a free passage, free movement, passengers uh, traveling uh, through uh, international airport to international airport. I think it's not, it's not important to me, I would say, to call it charter or commercial. The bottom line is that the airport is operational. People can travel easily, uh, and that's the most important, I guess. It's up to other airlines to uh, fly to Kabul or not. It's, I think as far as the civil aviation is concerned, I think it's fully operational. And do you think there's going to be more of these flights each day now? Well, I think this is uh, beyond my, uh, uh, beyond my uh, uh, control. This is up to uh, Qatar Airways, and it's up to the caretaker governments to engage with Qatar Airways to engage and ask for more flights, and I think this is just up to, to, to the airline and to, 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 uh, to the caretaker government. Ready is Kabul airport. As I mentioned earlier, the Kabul airport is fit for navigation. It is fit for receiving and send dispatching commercial flights. And as you can see, Qatar Airways is flying on daily basis from the airport. At... However, it is up to other airliners to schedule their own flights according to their respective needs. We are doing all what we can with our international partners to speed up the full operation of the airport. And we 
hope that other airline companies will be able to fly freely and on routine basis to and from the airport. That is uh, yes, Dr. Murtala bin Majid al Khatani. That's Qatar's special envoy of the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Counterterrorism and Mediation in Conflict Resolution, talking on the apron of uh, Doha's Hamad Airport. Um, just after a Qatar Airways plane landed at the airport, uh, after departing Kabul with around 158 passengers, it's estimated, it's said to be the second flight from Kabul to Doha on board were citizens from the US. They were German, Canadian, French, Dutch, British, Belgian and Mauritanian. We can see pictures there of them. Uh, a variety of different people, including children, as you can see. There are some families coming down um, the gangway there. Let's talk to our correspondent, Mohammed Jamjoum, who has been live as the plane has landed. Mohammed, um, Dr. Murkhlaq bin Majed al Khatani there making a very specific point that this was not an evacuation mission, this was free passage of passengers from international airport to international airport. It seems uh, that the, Qatar is very keen to stress that Kabul airport, after its intervention and that of Turkey, is now open for business. Well, that's right. And, and one of the things that I asked Dr. Al Khahtani about uh, is whether or not this was considered by Qatari officials to be a charter flight. There was a little uh, bit of confusion yesterday as to whether the first flight that took off from, from Kabul and landed here in Doha, that one had about 113 passengers on board, if that was just a regular passenger flight or if that was considered a charter flight. And it was clarified today by a Qatari official, even before this flight landed, that this is technically a charter flight. When I asked Dr. Al-Qahtani about that, he stressed the fact that, look, these are passengers that are able to leave of their own volition. Yesterday, before the flight took off from Kabul, on Kabul Airport, uh, Hamid Karzai Airport uh, in Kabul, he had said that these are uh, passengers who have their papers, uh, who have tickets and boarding passes, and they got on this flight. Uh, whether or not they are technically considered evacuees, the fact of the matter is they were able to leave, and that's what the officials who are here tonight are stressing. Dr. Al-Qahtani saying, for him, at the moment, the important thing is that the passengers had their papers, that they were able to get on those planes, and that they were able to arrive here. I asked Dr. Al-Qahtani as well about whether or not we should expect more of these types of flights in the days to come, specifically Qatar Airways flights like the plane you see behind me coming from Kabul, arriving here in Doha. And he said that uh, that's going to be up to, in some regards, uh, Qatar Airways. Uh, they're going to be, you know, corresponding, communicating with the airport in Kabul and, and arranging these flights. So uh, there's still a little bit of vagueness about how exactly this proceeds. But one of the things that he stressed in these remarks from the tarmac here in Doha uh, was that um, the airport in Kabul is almost fully operational now, that flights uh, can get there, that they can take off from there, and that uh, with uh, the Qataris working uh, with the Turks, they have been able to get uh, the airport in Kabul into a semi-workable order, and they're happy about that. Now, I should mention also the fact that of these around 158 passengers who arrived here this evening, uh, they are going to be processed, they're going to be taken through customs, through passport control, and then uh, they are going to be taken to a compound here in Doha, which has been housing temporarily uh, many of those who are in transit. Uh, some of them are uh, refugees, some of them are evacuees, um, until they get to their final destination. Uh, there are hundreds of those Afghans who have been at that compound for a few weeks now. Um, when we saw the passengers deplane you certainly felt a palpable sense of relief. There were many families, there were parents, and there were children. Um, and you could tell that they were really glad to have finally been able to leave Kabul and to finally get here. Although I must add, there still is a lot of uncertainty for their future. They are going to be here at least for tonight, but where they go and when they go from here, that's not exactly clear at this stage. And of course, that is going to be concerning because one would imagine that there are going to be families and friends who are waiting for passengers off that plane uh, to, to get in touch with them and so on. I know you were there when the first plane out of Kabul to Doha uh, landed um, yesterday on Thursday. Um, just give us a sense of what it was like then, given the fact 
that uh, given us the, the fact that that was the first flight out of Kabul. Rob, Rob I'm so sorry to have to interrupt you, but uh, airport security is telling us we're going to have to leave, so I'm going to have to make my, uh, my answer here quite brief. Uh, last night when we were here, when we saw the first uh, passengers arrive, I can tell you that they were extremely relieved. There was one Canadian woman who told us that she couldn't even sleep on the flight, as exhausted as she was, as, as, as harrowing a journey as it had been for her to even get on that plane. She couldn't sleep because she was, she was so nervous about what was going to happen next, but she was so relieved to have been able to leave Afghanistan. My apologies. We are going to have to, um, we are going to, have to decamp from here. Thank you. Mohammed, yeah, I understand, Jim. Thank you very much indeed. That's Mohammed Jamjim talking to us from uh, Hamad Airport. We're just seeing some pictures, uh, the latest pictures of those some of those passengers coming off that second Qatari flight um, from Qatar Airways landed at Qatar's uh, Hamad Airport probably about 15 minutes or so ago. It's the second flight to come out of Kabul Airport on board. As I mentioned before, there have been citizens from the United States, Germany, Canada, Dutch, French, Belgian, British and Mauritanian. We understand that it may well be that more will be coming out. But the, we heard Dr. Mokhlaq bin Majed al Khatani, that's Qatar's special envoy of the Minister of Foreign Affairs for Counterterrorism and Mediation in Conflict Resolution. He was speaking uh, to our correspondent Mohammed Jamjum just a short while ago, and he had also been at plain pains to say that this was not evacu an evacuation mission. This was free passage of passengers from and the international airport at Kabul to another international airport. He said it was up to other carriers to decide whether or not they could take flights into Kabul.